Go Tenant, the revolutionary new property software built by landlords and trusted by tenants. Go Tenant is your one-stop property management assistant that will take the pain away from your tenant recruitment process and the management of your properties. From advertising your property to maintenance reporting, electronic signatures to full property management software. Stop worrying about double bookings and the hassle of unnecessary admin because Go Tenants is here to enable you to seamlessly run your portfolio from anywhere in the world. Go to gotenants.co.uk to find out more. Good morning, everyone. It's nine o'clock. Well, bang on nine o'clock. I'm having my brew. So I hope you can join me today. I've got a couple of topics that I wanted to discuss with you. Um, what a horrible day. Um, it's awful, isn't it? I mean, we are really into the winter, I think, now. It's just disgusting. I get a little bit nervous when we get all the bad weather um, for obvious reasons, you know, because it just comes with problems with maintenance and everything else. So when it starts to rain, I'm looking out the window now really heavily and we've got all the bad uh, winds that we've had over the weekend. Well, I'm surprised. I've got into the office this morning and there haven't been any messages yet. I don't want to tempt fate. Touch wood. So today's cup of tea with Rick G. I'm going to talk about deposits because um, it came up on one of the other threads. And oops, bear with me. I just got a notification come up. So deposits and why we don't take them. Well, for us, um, we don't take deposits for lots of different reasons, not in our HMO portfolio. Why don't we take deposits? Well, I think, you know, we like to try and be better than the competition. And we like to make our rooms more affordable. So therefore, we can obviously have less voids. Because in a crowded market, there's always room in a crowded market, folks. But you've got to be better than everybody else. So to... To be on top of the competition and to be more desirable, we don't take deposits. So, for example, in our area, we have agents that will charge typically £200 fee and then typically £400, let's say, for example, for a month rent in advance. And then on top of that, a deposit, which is usually another month's rent in advance. So to get a room in our area with an agent for a HMO, you're looking at about a thousand pounds down. Now, there's not that many, you know, young professionals or postgraduates or even students, depending on your demographic, that have got that kind of cash. So it's a thousand pounds. It's a lot of money. So what we've decided to do is cut that deposit level out and offer our rooms without a deposit. Now, it also comes with the added benefit of inventories because Inventories are really hard for HMOs anyway, because very often the shared facilities, the shared areas, we, we just can't really establish uh, who's damaged anything because of the shared element. So we don't have to conduct inventories, which means that the administration side of things going into a property is going to be a lot easier. And also coming out because we don't have to do an inventory when they come out either. We don't have to register the deposit and we can advertise it as being no deposit. Now, what's a risk element? Well, like anything in life, there is always going to be a risk. And the risk element is that if anything gets damaged, of course, we've got no recourse. But because it's our own portfolio, then it's, it's our responsibility. Now, if you're managing for somebody else, I really wouldn't suggest that you, know, you go down this route because if it's not your house and if it's not your property, then it's going to be a slightly different element to it. But because it's our property and, and there are our, the, our houses and our tenants and our belongings, then really the risk element is down to us. Now, does it make for a worse type of tenant? Well, we've been doing this a long time. We've got a big portfolio. And no, I honestly don't think it does. So people say, well, if you're not taking deposits, surely the level of tenant that you are getting is going to be not very desirable and it's not the case folks it really isn't the case for us because we are very stringent in our tenant referencing procedures and as many of you know we will do that before we even go to the viewing so we know that by the time we get to the viewing that the tenant is going to be suitable before we even waste any of our time so we don't do uh, we don't take any risks in regards to um, taking the wrong tenant because of that. So in my experience over, I don't know, let's do a snapshot. Over the last three years, 
we'd probably had to replace maybe three mattresses because they've become soiled. We can't claim it back from the tenant because we don't take deposits. But it's only three mattresses over, you know, the period of three years. So the risk level for us is really, really negligible. Now, I'm not saying to you, this is what you must do. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to you is this is what works for our business. So when we advertise on Spare Room, we make a point of saying no deposit. Get your room with us and save X because we don't charge those deposits. Now, we still only go for working professionals. So the level of tenant applicants is not changed and we don't take people that um, you know are high risk or we perceive to be high risk anyway. So that's what we do. Now, we do charge fees. OK, now I know coming up to probably April, maybe September next year, we are going to be seeing the lettings fee ban. Now, does that really come into play with private landlords? Well, even if it doesn't, we are going to have to step aside from the fees anyway, because we need to remain competitive. And if we've got agents that are. Um, oops, sorry. Bear with me a sec, folks. So I'm just saying that. Um, my volume control i'm just pressing the buttons on there sorry folks hope you can hear me even if we are taking fees away um um and if it doesn't count for us because we are private landlords rather than letting agents we still need to remain competitive in the market so we're not going to be charging fees when the fee bank comes in but at the moment we do charge a fee and it's non-refundable what's the fee for the fee is for our staff time it's for the contracts it's for the referencing and everything that comes with it so yes at the moment we charge a fee Moving forwards to April, May next year, there are two things that will be introduced into the market. So we're going to have the mandatory client money protection. A great move, really good move. And we're also going to see the lettings fee ban. Now, they say that they're going to come in at the same time. Now, I suspect, and this is just from me, my own point of view, I suspect that we will probably see the rollout of client money protection first before the fee ban because if they do it the other way around i think that lots of companies might start to struggle because they can't take fees anymore some of the smaller agencies might even go out of business so that means that um, they are putting their clients at risk so it would make more sense if they put client fee protection in first and then got rid of the referencing fees. I don't know, what do you think? That's what I suspect will happen. I don't know. I don't have any inside information on that. So that's our procedure, folks, okay? So loads of people saying good morning, so just quickly flick through. Hello, uh, Luis, hi, Leighton, hi, Tara, hi, Mark, hi, Jeff, uh, hi, Tara, hi, Mike, and hi, Dinos. And hi, Lee. So hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've all got your brews, by the way. Okay, so that's the first thing on the agenda. That's why we don't take deposits. I don't know whether we will moving forwards. I don't know. Now, we do take deposits on our flats. That's a different story. Hi, Christian. Uh, because our flats are, um, I don't know if you've seen the posts that we put out there on our new refurbs. They're quite high end. Um, you know, we put a bit of money into them and we've started to take deposits just on the flats because we perceive those as being a higher risk because of the, um, the level of investment that we've got in them. So that's the tenant deposits. Next on the list today, uh, my questions, I've got my questions here. Alarm inspection, so great question um, about alarm inspections. So I just wanted to cover um, what the LACOR's guidelines says about what alarm inspections you need and how to do it, okay? So this is what we do. So if you're not sure about this, you can watch this back later when we post it. So LACOR's, is the national guidance, it is only guidance for local governments, sorry, local communities um, for the fire safety for the private rental sector. Now, it is only guidance, okay, but most people will use that as a benchmark, all right? So, for HMOs, what category alarm system do you need? So, this is what the LACOR's guidelines says. There are two types of HMO. There is a a uh, bed sit type HMO and a shared house type HMO. A bed sit type HMO will be people that are on a contract and they don't generally know each other. They are living in the house separately. So that would be a bed sit type HMO. So for that type HMO, then over three floors, we're talking about over three floors, the LACOR's guidelines is a grade A system. Okay, and that's the one where you've got a panel and you've got break points. 
okay? Now, to service a grade A system, you should, according to Lacour's, test, every test one call point every week. And that can be done by any responsible person. So it could be you, it could be your cleaner, it could even be a tenant. And then they need to record the findings in the um, inspection logbook, which you must keep at the premises. Okay, so that's your grade A system. And then every six months, your grade A system will need to be serviced by a registered engineer. And then it will be certified. And then you need to put your recordings in the logbook in the house. All right, so that's a grade A system. So just to quickly recap, so grade A system is the panel. Okay, it needs to be one call point every week needs to be tested and the results need to be recorded in the house pack or wherever you keep your logbook. And then every six months, the system will need to be um, serviced and certified by a registered engineer. Okay, and then that needs to be kept in the house. And then we've got um, Lacour states, then you've got a shared house type HMO, whereby um, the tenants generally know each other. And again, if we do this over three floors as an example, that would be a grade D mains interlink system. So that needs to be tested every month just by pressing the button, beep, 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 making sure you log your findings. And then it needs to be serviced by a registered engineer once every 12 months, okay? So that's what LaCour states. Now, um, you will need to make sure that you are compliant to your council's local recommendations because at the end of the day, it's your council that is going to be testing it. So they, they will tell you what alarm system you will need to put in. So you your council might say, well, yeah, you've got a bedsit type HMO over two floors. I'm happy with a grade D mains interlink system. I can't make that call, obviously. I can only tell you what's in the LaCour's document. But make sure that you're aware of what your local council standards are. And we always dip back to that, don't we? We always say, just kind of a quick slurp on my brief. It's coffee, by the way, not tea, sorry. <laughs> it's only my second one today. I got up late. I was up at 5.15 today, which is late for me. Um, so, yeah, you need to make sure that you dip back and always go on what your local councils say because they're going to be passing the license at the end of the day. So uh, we've just covered deposits. We've covered alarm inspections. What time is it? OK, we're rattling through. If you've got any questions for me, folks, please put them in and I will scroll through them in a second. Be nice to see who's on. Um, folks, I've got a webinar coming up on Wednesday. Um, it's my top tips for HMO investors. What I'll do later is I'll post the link down below. So if you want to join me on Wednesday night, eight o'clock, that's cool. Be nice to see you. So I've got another question here and it's about uh, displaying the information in our HMOs. Where do we display all of the um, the house information. So this is quite a good question actually because it comes up quite a lot in the group. Now the HMO management regulations stipulate that you have to display your HMO license and you have to display the manager's contact details um, somewhere prominent. So usually on a notice board perhaps or even um, on the kitchen fridge on the door of the fridge. So that's the only information by law that you have to display in a prominent position. Now, we do have to put other documentation in the house, but it doesn't necessarily need to be displayed. So the things that we provide, what we do is we have a house pack. I can't show you one because rightfully they're in the properties. Just let me see if we've got anything that resembles a house pack. We don't. But here we have, actually I just found this. It's not my desk, by the way, I'm at someone else's desk. This is the information that we need to provide. You're gonna see this back to front, folks, because I'm on my reverse camera. So this is the document that we have to put in a prominent position. The manager's contact details, new era property, address, and full office telephone number. I know this looks staged. It's not, I actually did just find this in George's drawer. Now, the other information we put in what we call a house pack. So we go off to Staples or, I don't know, a stationery store near you, and we get one of these folders that's got um, see-through envelopes inside of it. And we put all of our house documentation in that folder, and then we put that folder in the kitchen drawer. And then underneath on the, um, the telephone number, we put all the house documents can be found in the house folder situated 
in the top kitchen drawer. And we put all of our documents in there. And that for us makes it, it doesn't look institutionalized. It doesn't look like it's, you know, a HMO because we don't want posters all over the walls. And it just looks really tidy. And it's fine. Our HMO officers are really happy with that. What do we provide in the house packs? So we put the PRS certificate or your ombudsman certificate, whichever one you have. We put the gas safety certificate. We have the electrical testing certificate. We have the PAT testing certificate. This is off the top of my head. Um, the fire alarm testing certificate, emergency lights, extinguishers if you have them. Some councils don't like extinguishers, folks, um, but we have to provide them. And we have our um, maintenance policy and our harmonious house document. I think that's most of it off the top of my head. And anything else you want to put in there. So you can put you know, advice on... Um, damp and mold and how to air the property by leaving windows open when necessary and the last bit of information that we have to now provide as well and we did before anyway is the uh, the bins how to manage the refuge have i got anything in here um i don't think i have i'm just looking in, in george's drawers here so we got a sticker next to the bins and it literally is recycling green bin general waste black bin please only use the relevant bins and your bin day is Wednesday morning and you must take your bins to the end of the driveway and that's what we put in our house packs folks so we're rattling through this this morning um come on folks any questions so uh Tara hello Tara let me have a quick slurp of my brew okay morning Rick do you cover the cost of the referencing missed the last two minutes okay well we do our own referencing Tara and, and, you know, this is up to you. This, I mean, I can only ever tell you what works for us. I'm not trying to preach to you and tell you what's good. What I don't do, folks, unlike some, is, um, you know, tell you that everybody else is doing it wrong because they're not. You know, other people will run their businesses in whatever way they want to run them. And I would never try and position myself off the back of depositioning somebody else so this is all i can tell you is what we do so lots of people would do this differently and that's cool I'm, I'm okay with that so we do our own referencing because referencing isn't that hard so if you go to a referencing agency what sort of things are they going to be doing for you so they're going to check their employment they're going to check their last um landlord they're going to check their credit score I pretty much think that's all they're going to do, to be honest. Now, it's not hard to do any of that yourself. Now, I don't know how much you'd pay for a referencing company because we don't use them. But I'm going to put it out there and say anything from £55 per applicant upwards. So we do it all ourselves. So to begin with, when we take um, a viewing, so in a minute, I've just got into the office, dead quiet this time in the morning because we kind of work flexible hours here. Um, what I will do is um, go on to spare room, have a look to see how many applicants we've had over the weekend for our rooms. Then we give the applicant a link to our Go Tenant system. Then Go Tenant will sort of filter out all of the rubbish applicants. And by that, they are going to be asked about 13 pre-qualifying questions. And we ask them things like, I mean, this is self-declaration, but then you know what? It's always going to be self-declaration. We ask them, have you got a criminal record? Have you ever been evicted? Have you ever been in rent arrears? Now, I know that they could give us any answer on that, but most people that see that, that do fall into those categories, won't even apply for a room. They'll just stop at that stage and it gets rid of all of the tenants that will never make it. So that's what we do. And then when we get, um, when they answer all those questions, when we're happy with them, um, we'll go to the viewing. And if we think that they're going to be great tenants, then we'll do our own referencing from that point. So we'll contact all of their um, previous landlord and their uh, current employer. We'll check their bank statements because we ask for the last three month pay slips or bank statements. If they can't provide that, then we ask for a work contract. And then we um, phone up the, you know, the landlord, the previous landlord, have a chat with them, make sure that they're not um, bad tenants. Now, that really is all. Oh, then we credit score them, folks. Sorry, I forgot about that bit. So if you go on to creding, cred, what's it called? Letting ref, lettingref.co.uk, lettingref.co.uk. And I think it's about £9.99 plus VAT for a credit score. 
And when you get that back, it comes back instant, you know, straight away. It will tell you whether they've got any county court judgments, any insolvencies, any bankruptcies. And it will give you an affordability test because it will ask you how much the room is. And it will also ask you how much the tenant prospect is earning. And it will give you an affordability based on the information you provide. So you've got everything you need. I don't know what else you could do apart from google your tenant make sure you google your tenant because it will come back with all sorts of horror stories sometimes but that's really all a tenant referencing company would do now somebody asked me i presented at the nla meeting about two weeks ago and i said that when we do this with go tenant go tenant will automatically send a reference request to the people that they enter as their current landlord and their current employer now that's great but then someone who challenged me and said well they could put anything down on that sheet they could put their mate down from the pub I said yes they could but then that's no different than them applying for a room anywhere and putting their details down on a, a paper application because you can only go with the information they provide so even on a paper application you you know they could put their mate Dave down from the pub what are you gonna do you're just gonna ring them you're gonna call them and ask the questions you're not physically gonna go and see them so there's only so much that we can do with that so Tara I kind of went off on one there a little bit but i hope that answers your questions um so the cost of all of that well we bear that ourselves and then we obviously charge a referencing fee to the tenant which is a 150 pound per applicant um which covers all of that and um, the contracts and our staff time etc so tara i hope that answers that question for you uh leighton hi leighton I very much appreciate the pin networking tips last week. Good. So if any of you missed the uh, the networking tips we did, um, I think um, it's on my YouTube channel, actually. I think Nathan uh, Layton's referring to uh, on that one. So, okay, cool. Have we got any more questions? Okay, let's have a look. Uh, Michelle, good morning. Hope you're well. Hope you've got a cup of tea. Um, let's have a look. So morning, Rick. You say you don't charge deposits for your own portfolio aside from your flats. Does this include rent to rent? Yeah, it includes everything. So when I say our own portfolio, um, rent to rent, we don't have a lot of rent to rents, folks. We've probably got, mm, I don't know, four maybe. Um, but don't forget with the rent to rent, the tenants are still ours and the furniture is still ours. So, you know, we're furnishing the property. Um, we either buy it, you know, if it's already in situ from the landlord. Um, or we put it in ourselves. So the risk level is still ours. So if the tenant doesn't pay, then there is no risk to the owner because we pay the owner guaranteed rent every month anyway, regardless of whether the tenant pays, regardless of whether the tenant damages anything. So when we take on a rent to rent property, we take the whole responsibility. So if a, a television gets stolen, yeah, we're going to have to pay for it. If a washing machine gets nicked, who's ever going to steal a washing machine? Oh, actually, great example. We had a, a fridge stolen um, on our refurb last week. So we bought a brand new fridge. Um, it's a double fridge, you know, the fridge freezer at the bottom. And we put it in our refurb project uh, in one of the flats. And the builders left the door open. And this property's got another 18 tenants in situ. And it's gone missing. It, it's disappeared. So we're going to have to now um, do room inspections over this coming week to see if we can locate it. It's either that or the builders have thrown it in the skip, which could have happened. But there's a great example for you. Um, no deposits. Well, first of all, it was an empty flat anyway. But even if it hadn't have been, we would have had to have borne the cost for it. So rent to rent properties are no different, Michelle. It's still the same. You know, we bear the responsibility for all of it. Now, like I said before, disclaimer, it's what we do. You know, there's nothing wrong in charging deposits. If you do take a deposit, make sure that you follow the procedure correctly okay so make sure that the deposit is lodged in the deposit protection scheme or whichever one you choose to use and make sure that the mandatory information is served within the allotted time otherwise if you try and evict the tenant moving forwards you're going to struggle okay so you've got a certain amount of time before you can um, start to uh, get all that information across okay um, so folks, it is 25 past nine. We've gone quite a long way today. Um, we've covered loads. So we've covered charging deposits, alarm inspections, and we've covered house packs. So folks, I've got a webinar on Wednesday.
please join me. I'm going to post the link later, and it's just more of this. It's just me on this one. I've got no guests on Wednesday night's webinar. But it's, um, I'd love you to join me. And I'll post the link below. So if you want the link, just let me know. And um, it's just a free webinar. It'll be 8 p.m. till 9 p.m. Just sharing some case studies and sharing some uh, top tips and what have you. Hi, Nima. Nima saying, morning, Rick. How many fire exits should the HMO have? Depends on the, um, depends on the structure, Nima, of the, the property. That is a question I can't answer just by that question. It depends on how complex a property is. It depends on whether it's got a protected route from fire. Lots and lots of things you need to consider with that. So what I suggest you do is have a fire risk assessment done, a professional, pay them to come out to the property and uh, before you do your refurbishment so they can guide you on what needs to go where, okay? So with a normal property, if it's just a house, then you're gonna have a front door and a back door that's going to be sufficient, provided you've got a protected route. So make sure that when the, um, the door opens, they go into a corridor, which is protected, which will lead them to a fire escape. So that's what I suggest you do, Nima, on that. So folks, thanks for watching. You're all very welcome. Thank you, Tara. And join me tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, again, 9 o'clock here for Cup of Tea with Rick G. Any suggestions on any of the topics, folks, um, hit me up. With, um, with some suggestions, I'll cover them tomorrow. So until then, see you tomorrow morning. Go Tenant, the revolutionary new property software built by landlords and trusted by tenants. Go Tenant is your one-stop property management assistant that will take the pain away from your tenant recruitment process and the management of your properties. From advertising your property to maintenance reporting, electronic signatures to full property management software. Stop worrying about double bookings and the hassle of unnecessary admin. Because Go Tenant is here to enable you to seamlessly run your portfolio from anywhere in the world. Go to gotenants.co.uk to find out more.